See, I have set before you this day. I was telling Israel, life and good. And death and evil. It doesn't promote evil. That is talking about the power of choice. I start with the greatest love of God for humanity is a gift of choice. Look at verse 19. Tarome 30, 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that are set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, in case you are dull, who don't know the difference between life and death or blessing and cursing, say, let me choose for you. Let me help you to encourage you how to choose. It's like a, a, a guy that did exam and show you the answer. Choose this one, A, B, C. A is the answer. Therefore, choose life that both the whole, that both the whole and your seed may live. There's nothing that happens to you that will not extend to your seed. People are aware that whatever they do does not end with them. They be serious with life. In Exodus 13, verse 17 to the end, we saw Israel was about to leave the land of Egypt. They became multimillionaires in one night. A Philistine saw the necklaces and the earrings on the neck of those children living in Egypt. They would kill them silly as they pass. So God has to take them through a longer route. I start with telling you that the greatest love of God for humanity is a gift of choice. Edo Exodus 13, 17. Let's have a little discussion about this. My topic is Christians and the assumptions. Assumption, just God, God can, anything can happen. Or if God lead me and really tell me to go, everything will be okay there. He will measure us. He will take us to the root based on what you can handle. No father will give a car key to a child of six years old. He will kill himself. So a gun. American people shoot the children anyhow because children carry gun to the school. To them, they are playing. It's a toy. They blow the head. They don't care. And you don't put them in prison and say they will go to prison for that forever. Eternal prison. Long lives. Uh, prison, prison sentence to for a long sentence for 20 years for a child. He doesn't know it's, it's a toy as far as concerned. But well, verse 17, Exodus 13, I say the greatest love of God for man is the gift of choice. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of Philistine. I want to see how God programmed your life. Although that was near, everyone wants shortcut. Everyone wants to get it today. Give it today what I'm asking for, if you are God. Let's peradventure. The people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. So God is talking as if he didn't know, he, he didn't know whether they would repent or not. Untested man may look innocent. It's not reliable. Money they have not seen in many years. Slave become multi-billionaire. They won't sleep. I'm a money until they enter the hand of Philistines and they go where's your face? Say I won't allow you to go ahead and that me. You go a longer route. He knew what he was doing. I say to you, the greatest love of God for man it is a gift of, of choice. But man is a self-determining being. That's why it's a peradventure. But every choice has a consequence. He said in verse 70, they might change their mind. We often use the power of choice against God. We, they might change their mind. So he allowed them to go on long round, long route, round about to avoid battle. They did not prepare for Verse 18, look at verse 18. I'm laying foundation. Christians and the assumption. School of wisdom. But God led the people about, about. It's as if he doesn't know what he's doing. Say a man tells the Mose. God led people about through the way of the wilderness, of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up her nest 
out of the land of Egypt, they went in order. Then you know the trouble when he came. So if God can trust me, that's my summary in verse 18, and that's be your summary, that's deduction from that scripture, verse 18, if God can trust me that I will not change my mind, he can shorten my journey to my destiny. If in language, what is it? Look at verse 18. If God can trust me, that will not change my mind. He doesn't want me to go ahead and, and, and go to hell. He doesn't want me to go ahead and fail. Because if you, if you fail, say, 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 be he's a priester. He's a brother. He preached to others. Why should he be asleep? Why did he go back? Why did he fail? He doesn't want any abuku to his name. That they are castigating and saying that God is not real. He wants to show his power. Say, I will show my power on Pharaoh. God is powerful. He loves to show his capabilities and his love. He said, if they go and have trouble and go back, Moses and all our effort is defeated. I won't chance men who are not proved. We are not tested. That's why I said, don't make a novice a deacon. When we start ministries, you know, people are zealous, so they make them leaders. Over times, if you have your way, you will not make them a leader when you grow up. And every ministry express that. Because at the initial time of your son, everybody is zealous. They don't know what is happening. He's doing everything. Then what is the, that's why God says, let them have some degree of maturity and be able to approach and live so they can handle shame and approach. Because they look at, they start to behave like a big man or big woman. And that's the problem. So become a snare to their life. This is what God is saying here. I can't, I cannot trust a person who is not tested. I cannot. If God can trust me, you, that you wish, that you will not change your mind on the road, the plan for you, you will not see trouble and think that God has failed. He can shorten your journey to my destiny. So God will not allow you to face things you can't handle. Number three. I'm just speaking of 17 and 18. I'm trying to dissect it in teaching God's word. And first Corinthians 10, 13, it comes to my mind. There are no temptation that taking you but such as common to man. But God is faithful. So what he does in prolonging the journeys, in testing us through life, and not to be tested, is his love. Because he's a faithful God. Uh, we are reading 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There are no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. So they won't break, allow the devil to use some common test, trials, to come against you. If you cannot handle it, it will, it will not allow you to come across your path. Who will not allow over you to be tempted above your ability? Woman to lay hand God is in charge of our life. As in charge of our life. Do you know that Hebrew 11.22 talk about Joseph? Joseph had done the cloud of witnesses before he died. He believed that the prophecy would come to pass, and he told them, he encouraged them to carry his bones along with them where they are going. By faith, Joseph, where he died, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel. That's many, many years old. When everything was still working, where things are happy, where everybody is dancing, when he was a prime minister and they are enjoying leadership, you were already looking at the future that will not be there. Make mention of the party of the of Israel and get commandment concerning his bones. He said, when, when Messiah come, he will not meet me in this land. I will resurrect where my father died. I will rise up with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will not be prime minister. A position that is envious, you will be envy it and say, prime minister. He said, when he goes, he said, just when you go, you carry me now. Pharaoh will be suspecting, will be angry. But I know a time will come whereby the Pharaoh, everybody will go away and then carry me will not be an issue. Israel did not forget the bones of, of Joseph. 
other peoples are left in Egypt except Joseph because he made them to swear to a hold. I'm going there. He valued his destiny more than the stories. I'm a prime minister today. Well, my post is precious. Carry along. What is he saying to us? Be, he believed pro prophecy should encourage us. Joseph and Hoda did not see what we saw, what the other Israel saw. They knew the outcome. They didn't see the trouble, the suffering as such. They knew the outcome. The father, father had faith in us. Somebody, my father, somebody. The father of faith, they have faith in us. I have faith in you that you're not failing. God has faith in me that I will obey him. He had faith. We've heard what he went through. He said, carry my bones. Now, he, he did sober. Others are sobering. He was a prime minister when he died. But he said, I won't, I won't be here. Where you are going is more important to me than we, this year. Yet to see Israel, every time they are in trouble on the road, they will say, go back to Egypt. Slave they have nothing good in Egypt. They are going back. Yet, Prime Minister, who was dying, say, my boy, go there. Vision. Beloved, God is ahead of you. Our God is a great shepherd. What does he tell us? He knows what we can handle as a Christian and the assumption. The dangers of money in a family, when people have money, somebody is rich in the family, or a father is rich, is the spirit of entitlement. Children start to think that it's their right. So they don't do anything again. They don't work hard, they don't do anything again. They start to assume. Luke 15, 12. The story of Paddy Podigason. The first thing he said, Father, Give me what fault to me. Who told you that anything fault on you? Look at it. And the younger of them said to his father, this is the problem of the, I'm talking about Christians and the assumption. He assumed that the father is laboring for him. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that fell out, falleth to me. Who told you that anything fall on you? Pay, pay to me. Who told you that you have a, a portion? What a father holds is son is wisdom, not money. Not money. He mean the other boy who was angry. Verse 29. Look at verse 29. He also came back. The issue of his contention hunger was my own. I said my topic is Christians and the assumption. And he asked himself to his father, No, this many years do I serve you. Neither transgress I at your command. And yet you have never given me a kid that I make merry with my friend. What God will use to man is to make you, is to give you wisdom, is to learn from wisdom. That's what we are doing, school of wisdom. To always give me things and mentality is what makes the body of Christ to be poorer than the world today. How can God love the ungodly more than us? He didn't put the weight of the world to the ungodly, ungodly and their children. But well, the believers have a mentality of assumption that I'm entitled. So surround your people, surround yourself with people who have revelation. These children, the father, they has two individuals, Christians, so to say, who don't have revelations of his father, of the father. The role of the fathers is to mentor, is to create their home. To create wealth, to create blessing, to do your part. There are some today that are waiting for manna to form to them in their home. You are gathered, they are not gathering. You are obeying, they are not obeying, but they are looking for one magic manna. So don't surround, don't surround yourself with people who are hurting you. These two believers, these two sons, they hurt the father. How can somebody hurt you and you still be around him? Proverbs 13:20. The first assumption in your life is that don't allow the unwise to hurt your life unnecessarily. Because when people come to you looking for responsibility, they will bless you. When they look for what they get from you, they will hurt you. 
Proverbs 13 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a company of fools shall be destroyed. You see, the prodigal son is sovereign, needless sovereign in their home. Because if you put no value, no one will put value on your life. Put value on wisdom. Three things you can do with money. With wealth. Number one, you can spend it. A fool like a prodigal son in Luke 15, 12, spent everything. What you buy? It's not the owner, so you can spend it anyhow. A fool spend everything. It's a spender, a waster. But those who are heartbreak people, they save alone. So they can be watching the money, eyes increasing in their purse, working in their account. Ah, ah. Oh, the 500,000, 5 million. They watch it until the inflation economy changes. And what you could buy three years now, cannot buy again. They are watching it. They are happy, seeing money in their account, in their purse, in their home. When a labor market broke, got burnt, you will see people whose money are kept there who are crying. Because they are eating it to see it every day. They make them happy. Number three, you can invest it. Wise people invest. Average people save. Foolish people spend. Spend all. It's not wrong to spend. Spend all. As a Christian and the assumption. Foolish people don't save when they ought to save. Second Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to be systematic about what I'm teaching today. Christians and the assumption. Second Corinthians 9, 8 to 11. Verse 10. If you don't, if you hit what you sow, if you hit what you sow, so you may have no future. Go when the future come, you'll be hungry. But if you also save, so everything you need to eat, you may die before the affairs come. Hear what he said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you. Always having all sufficiency in all things may have burned to good work. God wants us to do good, to abound, to increase in doing good. Verse 9, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now he that, where I'm going, he that ministers seed to the soil. God gives you things. Time is a seed. We are here today. It's a seed of time. You have a choice not to come, but you are here. Because you wait and see the opportunity cost. Which one is better? Is it two hours? Or two and a half hours? And then pay some money, looking for foil, be here. The inconvenience is there. But when you wait with the wisdom of God that impartation has come to your way, you weigh it as more important. Those who don't weigh that way, make a choice. Or as accordingly, according to their wisdom. Here he say, now he that ministers see to the sower, both minister bread. God give you bread for your food. And multiply your seed sown, two things. And increase the fruit of your righteousness. Verse 11 now, being enriched in everything to the all bountifulness, which causes through all thanksgiving to God. So we see seed to sow and bread to eat. That's life. Don't sow what you must eat. And don't eat what you must sow. Somebody, when somebody has God, why are you taking me through these troubled waters? Life is troublesome. Like Exodus 14, 15, 16. The Lord said to him, because the enemy cannot swim. The reason why I'm taking you through troubled water is because your enemy cannot swim through the Red Sea. I will have taken you through a shorter cut to fill this thing. Short cut. But I know they cannot swim to Red Sea. So that's why I took you there. Exodus chapter 14, 16 to 18. But lift down your rod and stretch out. He's giving instruction to Moses over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. But see what happened. <coughs> and I, behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptian. And they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, upon all his most upon his chariot, upon his horsemen. I was preaching on Sunday, 
in Akure, I said that Pharaoh was the owner of every land. And God said, hold no more anything except love. If God has them to take from them and make inscription poor and told them to borrow. We, and he said, don't owe anybody anything. Then how do you borrow? Where you know you're not coming back? That looks deception, deceptive. But no, the Pharaoh owns everything. And if Pharaoh died, and Pharaoh died, really, who will pay? When you owe a man who is dead, who will pay? So God knows what he's doing with your life. So I say, when you ask God, why are you taking me through troubled water? The answer is that because your enemy cannot swim. So instead of looking behind you and crying like they did, Moses, see, we will have left here to die. Is it good to die here? Just know that if God takes you through a likely road, it's because your enemy will perish. You become a graveyard for them. For you, a passage for you, become a graveyard for your enemy. I don't want to ask you a question. Why do I have always feel that I'm failing and struggling? Why is struggle part of my, li my life? Each challenge, I want to answer you that each challenge is an opportunity for growth. The answer of God is that each challenge in your life is an opportunity for your growth. If there's no test, no testimony, no trial, no triumph, 1 Corinthians 16, 8 and 9. I'm answering the assumptions of Christians. If trouble is there, God is not with me. If everything is, is open door, God is there. The devil can hide the open door and close. You must know the will of God for our life and accept the will of God first as we are moving with God. Look at what Paul, the understanding he had. No wonder, late starter, he did so marvelously well that he did, he did so great things that is honorable. Apart from Jesus, that man, he finished his race and did well and conquer. But well, hear what he said, I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, verse 9, for a great door and a fetchua. Do you hear that? It's open to me, and there are many adversaries. So this man has known how to handle the troubles of life. To him, each challenge is an opportunity for growth. So every opportunity is wrapped in the garment of opposition. That's what he said. So matter of what he said. If I will make it my English language and write it in my contemporary grammar, every opportunity, I'm going to stay in Ephesus on the Pentecost, for every opportunity is wrapped and wrapped up in the garment of opposition. So I'm not focusing on the opposition, I'm focusing on the opportunity inside. Because I told you that if the enemy, if the enemy know there's nothing to rob, how will they rob an empty house? How will he throw a stone at a mango tree that has no fruit? You should rejoice and thank the Lord that, the, that something is important in your life. That's why the enemy is trying to challenge you, bringing struggles where it can become opportunities for blessing. Number three, question, why do I always feel confused and lost? It is because you overlook the plan of God for your life. So focus on him. He will pave the way because in his hand, everything shall be well. I say shall be well. Yes, Example, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know what I'm doing with your life. I have it all made up. Plans to take you, to bring you an outcome that you, be, you look back, things you cry about today. Many years in the future, you look back and thank me for allowing you to go through what you go through. Another example, Matthew 14, 31, Peter, what happened to him? He feel, feel confused. Jesus would talk to him to come. He was coming, but what happened? He, he changed his focus. He was looking at the storm. Look at first Peter, so that Matthew 14, 13. If the miracle will have been a great, excellent miracle, but he punctuated with what? With, with conviction. He felt confused because he saw trouble. If Jesus is there, he thought that trouble will stop, but trouble didn't stop Jesus. He walked on their trouble. He walked on the world, come, and he was walking already. If he made it to that level, where did he have to sink? Matthew 14, 31. This, this is what we know. I don't want to, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, give me verse 30 to understand where it's coming from. You know all this thing. But when he saw the wind booster us, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. 
That's prayer. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, thou of little faith, where do you doubt? So doubt, punctuate, doubt, cut doubt. He told the good testimony we had. So don't allow that and fear. When you feel confused and lost, sinking, it's because you overlook the plan of God for your life. Because that plan of God is secure. Except love you, the house, the labor in vain that build it. God's plan for your life is secure. God say, I know what I'm doing with your life. Number four question. Somebody is asking, why do, do, do I have to face disappointment and setback? Why do I have to face disappointment and setback? Why is it that uh, people make progress who don't know Jesus like I know, I confess? Where do I? Example, Jeremiah 15. He was caught from the womb. Jeremiah was anointed, was ordained. God said it was in my dream. You, you, you just landed in your body, in your, in your mother, and came to the world. So because you landed in human flesh, you have forgotten the memory of where you come from. is not clear to you. But you are an eternal being. You came from heaven. You are eternal being. You will be eternal forever. But you just when you had the sweet, the body sweet, black, white, anything you have, and you have it all, you have forgotten where you came from. But you didn't just exist here. Your system predicts your being here. You are a being that has a stead in God. Jeremiah 1 4. Look at it. When you see yourself this way, you, you, you carry yourself with courage that you are important. You are eternal being. Then the word of the Lord came to me and saying, See what he said to him. Before I form you, and for everybody in the belly, I know you. You are my dream. You are my plan. You are eternal. You have co-persisted before you came here. The reason why you don't why I don't know my past. Because you came in your body, so you forgot. There's, that's why the Bible reveals God. The Holy Ghost reveals to you. And the more you reveal, the more you walk on them, the more you walk in liberty and, and dominion. The more you don't know it, the more you look like ignorant. The more you know it, the more you have in victory, walk in victory. I know you before you come out of the womb. I sanctify you, ordain you, a prayer unto the nation. So he knew him. No wonder. But see, when trouble came, Jeremiah 15, 18 and 19, hear what he said. Where do I have to face disappointment and set back? I say because in disappointment, you learn to trust. In setback, you learn to persevere. The reason, because in disappointment, you learn to trust. If there's no darkness, there's no reason for creation of light. In disappointment, you learn to trust. In setback, you learn to persevere. Comfort does not help us. It's where you try. If there's no exam, what happened? You go to every class, no exam. Nothing will motivate you. Look at Jeremiah 15, 18 and 19. See the trouble. Somebody who had a call from the womb, but disappointment had come. Oh Lord, see what he's talking. Remember me and visit me. Revenge me of the persecutor. He's looking at like a black man. Praying fire against his enemy on the mountain. Take me not away, your Lord sovereign. Know that for your sake I have sovereign book. The reward will have fallen. I did eat them. And your word was unto me, the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Oh, praise Are. For I'm called by your name, O oh Lord God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoice. I sat alone because of your hand. That's anointing. But that has filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable? Which refused to be healed, would that be altogether unto me as a liar? And as water that faileth, yeah, what God answer him. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you will return, oh, till Lord, yeah. some, you know, they have left, they live in their mouth. When somebody's living, leaving God from his mouth, that's my put it back like, oh, till Lord. If thou will return, then will I bring you again. And thou shalt stand before me, and if thou take for the precious from the buy, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return to you, but return not to them. That things are failing and struggle and you are in the will of God. Even if they seem as if they are working for them, leave them. It's a matter of time. Can you give me verse 17 and 18, 18 and 18, 17, 18 and 18, and see and, and in, in Amplified Version? Amplify. I sat not in the assembly of those who make more merry, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone. That's because we are nothing. When God called you and you are following God as Christians, God called you to sanctify you, separate you. You are different. I sat alone because of your powerful hand was upon me. For you are you are filled with indignation. Every lawlessness and the judgments coming is making you angry at what they are doing. Rocked in lawlessness. 
is making you feel something agitated. It's something your the trouble and the fact the problem you want to solve are the things that touch your heart. What what make other people laugh, make you hungry. That's the problem you must solve by God. That's your call. That's what God wants. What make you angry? The unrighteousness make you hungry is what you God has led you to, to solve in the life of people. Why is my people perpetual and my wound incurable? Reduce it to be healed. Will you indeed be to me like a deceitful brook? Like water that fail and are uncertain? Therefore, God says the Lord to Jeremiah, if you return and give up this mistaken turn of distrust and despair, then I will give you again a settled place of quiet and safety. And you will be my minister. And if you separate the pressure from the wife, cleansing your whole heart from unworthy and unwarranted suspicion concerning God's faithfulness, you shall be my mouthpiece. But do not ye to them. Let them return to you, not you to the people. Where can they come fairly? People then call. When they call, they say to that or that. Men just me, you join them. Because it is easier for people but it to do wrong thing and to follow them. Caleb and Joshua knew they stood their ground. They went to stone them. Because they won't die. Or God came down to defend. Caleb had to leave leaders. They perish. Leaders. Majority. Some of them may be there who are sincere also, but they are afraid to own up. Let's join the majority. And ten died. But Caleb owned up and said they are bred. I went back to look at Caleb, Caleb many original word. His name is Dog. If I was not in Judah, it was one of the misbehaved that followed them and they were going. What they, so was distinct that Caleb, even Joshua did not talk. Because they know Joshua is a Moses boy. He knew the side he would be. But Caleb surprised them that somebody came in late starter, came in to join Kenyan there, and he knew what he knew, and nobody would dissuade him of what. No wonder. The land of Judah became so blessed because a leader was there who knew God in the person of Jacob, of Caleb. May you be that leader who know God and not beyond the ordinary, who is not playing while you are an hypocrisy. So, if, like Jeremiah, you feel disappointment and setback, in disappointment, you learn to trust. Feel your stuff at her. In setback, you learn to persevere. But the last question, somebody feel, why do I feel sometimes like I'm, if I'm, life is full of pain and helplessness? I don't know, who will help me? Helpless, helpless. Pain. The question, I, the answer I have for you, in your weakest moment, God is by your side. I say it's by your side. Paul said, this cross, this storm, take away from me. Three times I pray, I go say, my grace is what? Sufficient for you. Hebrew 13, 5 and 6. Hebrew 13, 1. So I've answered five questions that foolish people may ask in their ignorance. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with something as you are for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. What happened? So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my what? Epa. And I will not fear what man shall do to me. So God will use your pain to forge your character. James 1 3 to 4. He use your pain, what you go through, you to help others. To help others. Anything that delay your life, when God gives you a miracle, don't go to the covers. You, you have a ministry already to help others. To help them with how you conquer. To write a book. To share it here and there. Someone is waiting for one ministry to hear from God. God says the Lord. Go ahead and take a pulpit now and be preaching. No, what you go through and you conquer and you succeed is a ministry on your own to help others to live. With testimony already. James chapter 1, 3 and 4. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at what? Patience. Patience, verse 4 now. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect. Perfect means you be mature and entire, wanting nothing. So your pain to forge your character. 
second Peter 1, 5 to 10. I'm, I'm systematic about what I'm saying. And beside this, giving all diligence, out of your faith, what? Virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance and self-control, to temperance patience, to patience godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus, verse 10, now verse 10. But he that love us nine, but he that lack it, see? He that lack it, give me verse nine. But he that lack it, these things blind. So they are blind Christians. Presumptuous Christians. Christians and their assumption. And cannot see afar off. And are forgotten that he was put from the whole sin. Wherefore, the red brethren, give you just to make your calling election sure. For if you do this thing, you shall never fail, fall. So there are things to do to, that you are stable like a rock. So don't hit all your seed. I was praying tongues a few days ago and Lord said to my heart, and I wrote it down because I know it's coming, I'm coming on school of wisdom for you. He said, when you, when you hit all your seed, you have no exchange for future, future harvest. He said, when you hit all your seed, you have no exchange for future harvest. So seed is an exchange for harvest. When I say seed, it's not money a long time. I'm preaching. What I'm doing, time I'm spending. In Akure, school, Royal Ambassadors, I interviewed when I went to start school, some time, a year ago, two years, almost two years now, I interviewed teachers, from different churches, people, Christians in the town. Some were deacons, leaders. They are not born again. Or they don't know we are born again. Where are you? In this foundation class I give to ordinary people in, uh, in college, with 10 questions. Uh, born again. Uh, I am now the thing I used to do, I didn't do it again. That's why I'm born again. Some wrote there, okay, I'm now doing fine, I'm now following God. I am now going to church regularly. What does John John feel a Catholic John John? That's why I said, call the man in charge of my radio program, Orange FM. Say from now. It means in that land they have done bad work over the years. So when you hear my radio preaching every day, please let me shut and put salvation message, salvation there. That's why I start to say, put it there. So, not my voice, somebody's voice. After I finish, you see every morning, they put there. Say, if you are not born again, see after me. It must be Jesus, my Savior, my Lord. Because they don't. They are sincere, they are loving, they are happy. Happy over religion. They are not born again. The experience of salvation is not real. Only one person, one lady, passed the, pass very well, and you see that he, and, and that lady had trouble with his church because he has in the church he was going she, she knew the Lord but she had trouble a few days ago she told for me she said, they told me, she said I will die but Papa she said to me say, I did the operation and I'm still alive he had so trouble they have caused for her in where she was attending the church was, I won't tell you the name of that church gospel church she was attending because it's a misfit in their system So when you hit all your seed, you have no change for future harvest. harvest. So seed is an exchange for harvest. So what is seed? So, so seed. You see, we criticize him many things today. Thank God because we know the word here. What what exchange you have for your future harvest? The seed, when the farmer is going to take the seed there, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you. He knows that harvest is coming one day. I said, the Lord said, when you hit all your seed, you have no exchange for future harvest. So I wrote, I said, so seed is an exchange for harvest. Pupit, for instance. What's a pupit? It's a pupit. Abi? Am I right? I look at the channel of pupit. It's a race. Enclosed platform in the church 
in which the preacher delivered a sermon. This is raised up so I can see you. So you can be higher than you in a platform in the, in, in the church where a pastor or a preacher is delivering sermon. It's from the Latin word pupitum. But the intention it has from the original where pupit is where you pull people from the pit. If your beauty was a pulpit to be used by heaven, there's nothing that you have that God cannot use. Are you hearing me? It's where you pull people from, from, from the pit. You are supposed to be equipped to pull people from the pit with the help of the Holy Spirit. Every Christian, don't let them go to hell, the pit of hell, pit of danger, of trouble, of frustration, to pull them out. It is 37, 24. When they put Joseph in to go and kill him, what happened? It was Judah that encouraged. Genesis 37, 24. Just write it down. Judah was the one that encouraged them. He said, don't let kill our brother. Bring him out of the Bring him out. Don't kill him. He brought him out of the pit and sold him. And that selling, that sale become divine idea. No wonder Judah it's called praise. This all came from the house of Judah. Reuben, who was wicked, who had the smallest of tribe. Beloved, in giving it to people, never let them know you have more than enough. I don't say you should be stingy. Don't let their responsibility kill you. Don't, don't take the place of God in their life. Because somebody's coming to you. You find that in life. People that... I remember I was, talk, I was talking to my brother, Honorable to today, I said, tell the father of that lady. Less than, less than, less than, last, last two weeks, she needed, came around, I gave her 17,000 naira a few days ago. If that money, and he sent us to him, there is no food, I say, tell her that, Baba, to me, school, he said, yeah. tell her. There's nothing in the Bible that says I should sponsor you and sponsor your children. Why? Because they will kill you. If, if, because they know where to go. People come around to me. Somebody I gave her mother 12, 12 many, many years ago, and 15 years after, he appeared again. He knows his father could not do anything. I said to our chorus and helped them many years ago, 15 years ago, 15 years old now, got admission to pay 400,000 around in school. I called the father. I said, you are a reverend. You have messed up your past. This lady needs admission. She gets admission. We want her to go to school. You are seeing her as your daughter. We resemble you. What he said to me? And it's wise. He says, he said, she has, when there are schools of federal school that can put a child with all the cutter and trouble I have, she has. He said he put him in the school of uh, here. I understand the 400,000 dollars school, school fees. How will he get it? He said, what, does he, what is he planning when he put a child in the school without my, my knowing and knowledge? Because what's happening? He's running around out of foolishness. In the, in the past, I would have said, let me take over the school. But Lord said to me, don't be emotional. We didn't cause the trouble. That's what will kill you if you cannot take shake your heart from it. What do I, what do I say last night to you? You are learning wisdom here. What's the meaning? Christian and what? And their assumption. That somebody has problem doesn't mean you must solve it. Don't play God. Remember his life. People will never learn from their foolishness if you leave them. If you don't, leave, if you don't allow them to go, go through. Make a decision and give you a bill to pay. And because you are mature and responsible, you are looking for, you will not suffer. Does he not know what he's doing before he's suffering? See, you're not. I've played a fool like that for many years. The, uh, if his father and family see that he's driving a car, they will respect ministry. I bought him a car. We are there today. When you see some of them, they are walking with their leg. Kole menti to emotion, call them, physical. 
there are things to use money for, to do. Face, tell your neighbor, face your work. Face your life. Are you getting wisdom here? Christian and what? And the assumption. So don't let their responsibility kill you. The dangers of warning in the family is entitlement. I've shown you now. Money or wealth hide. It's hiding. It's available. There's wealth everywhere. Number one, it hides in idea. Idea is wealth. Luke 15, 17. The prodigal son will have died in the string land. Every time that he spent he had that money, he attracted the wrong people, stranger to him. They helped him spend the money. They thought he loved them. They love him. He didn't love him. They love his foolishness. But see verse 17. When he came to himself, he had an idea. Ah, if I don't know where I'm going, I must know where I'm coming from. <laughs> That's a mind. The longest journey is not going to the moon, no. it's going to yourself. Come to yourself. You will have died. Come, come to said, How many higher servants? Of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. He has idea, and with that idea, what happened? He went home. I will go back and serve my father. So I now know that what fell on me doesn't cannot last. So tell me it in thing. There's a power to create weight. The power to create weight is the idea God gives you. Don't allow ideas to die with you. Robert Titi said, 400 ideas come to a man every day. 400 ideas. You are rich, richer than your purse. Say, you are richer than your purse. I say, you are richer than your purse. So don't see yourself and say, I am poor. It's just not working. It's working. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God. For it is he that gives you the power, that's the idea, to get weight. He doesn't give you weight. He gives you the idea that he may establish his covenant, which is will unto the Father. Which covenant? Abraham blessing Samai. Abraham blessing Samai. Hear this from me. I believe that Isaac in famine, in, in the time of famine, every, he was so worthy because of Abraham father. But if inheritance will sustain a person, Isaac should be enjoying the weight of Abraham after he has gone. But Abraham, Isaac, in Genesis 26, he went to do farming on his own. It means no inheritance can sustain your future. He believed and trust the weight and inheritance of others, waiting for them to die. Could the quality will become great. You can't wait for inheritance to be great. But if he goes away and dies, some are praying that people should die so they can inherit. He will, he will lose it. In two years, he will go away. Is the idea that you know of that sustain? How can somebody be Abraham, Abraham, Abraham's son, and then you are families happen, and you are looking for and looking for where to go? It means the family of the days of Abraham, of 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 Isaac, had swallowed up everything that he had. Who tell you that the rich man cannot be zero if circumstances change? See what happened during COVID nineteen. With all possibilities. He has money at home. He can't go, nobody to buy. He can't go out because everybody is stay at home. What land does he eat? So ideas is wet. And Ford six education, six years of being school. He worked with Thomas Edison. He has the ideas of automobile. He became the richest man in the world at that time. They asked him, if you take all your money from you, what happened to you? He said, money is just appearance of weight. True weight is not money. He said, idea is weight. If you give me five years, take everything away from me, I'll be the richest. Because my riches, my riches is based on idea. Not, not, on, not, not on accumulation of anything. Number two, money hides in gift and talent. So package it very well. Money highs, weight highs in gift and talent. 
some despise like the man mark 25 they despite their talent five gain five give them two cities cities are more more important than talent one went to hide his own talent nothing he will not be put in the bank he didn't save it was foolish was not average and the master said why can't you save it if you know you cannot work with it so money hiding gift and talent many years ago i saw a man using ka -ka 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 -ka. he selling he was selling soap in this town when it was not government in those days selling soap around i saw my colleague i said is your soap good say yes say the package is poor say why not look at go to the shop and see how they package it and go and spend extra money and put the extra money on top of it to hard to eat and put it in the box that they are buying soap like you see locks and other be soap good soap and now start to sell it in town one day he saw me he gave me gift he said you are the one that spoke to my life say when i did what you asked me to do sir he was in church he was not going on the road he asked me to go and buy i said come what you are selling i cannot even buy i'm afraid it can be a poison is it good he said it's good when he packaged it he was so successful that he came to me to thank me and give me gift packages your gift and talents are important is it clear they are the asset you have some of you do you think it doesn't matter who is looking for me your gift and talent package well can get you to places there are people today who are who are who are, who are doing this, this this drop in villages who are experts who today when they expose them to a big light they can play more than sunny or sunny, sunny a day or so or well, no package can you look at what happened to david in the back side of wilderness he was take play music or to somebody discover him and said to the king there's a man who's anointed and he got to the peak it's my prayer that god will be to, to limelight number three opportunity of weight or blessing there's in opportunities god will if you have lived for 40 years god will have given you many more 40 opportunities opportunities many times have government of opposition and you don't there are people before who have married married their classmates and you wonder you marry him in the class in those days they are enemies you is the enemy in the class how come you marry <laughs> once they leave the school they start to see there's a value there's a value in that woman he doesn't take nonsense he has a standard and looking for themselves until they marry themselves and become good lovers what i'm saying opportunities are many times wrapped in the garment of opposition opportunities hide look nothing thirteen. do business till i come opportunities are many Especially in Africa, in Nigeria, what you can do? Open your eyes and see. May God baptize your eyes to see, to see opportunity. And he call his ten servant and deliver them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Give me to me another version. Say, Do business till I come. Some don't do business. Job, give you enough to save, to tight, you save until one day you create you invest it to be a work you start from job to work god is say he said bless the job of your hand job become you, you went to school you plan and then you create you have a job given to you to eat to tithe to obey god to eat and to save a little part of it and when you save that part of it to believe and start to wait for god to go and give you ideas when he comes sir I want to buy, I want to sell my land. How much is the land? His land is 200,000 Naira. But what I need now is 50,000 Naira. And you have it at home. Sign document. If you are married, I see your, your money. Don't write Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. can be anybody. Mr. and Mrs. Dupe. <laughs> Don't you trust me? Yes, we trust you. We are wise in this house. Anybody can be Mr. and Mrs. 50,000. Ah, 
we solve the problem. When we give him the arrest, faith, give me two months from now. I give you another 50,000 naira. The more you are increasing to get to the point of pay everything, the more difficult for him to return the money back to you. If it takes you one year to pay, one day it becomes your own. You will not get Mr. and Mrs. Duper so so. And when they have a copy or photocopy, photocopy are keeping your own. I want to keep a copy. If the man is something, uh, you don't trust me, tell me, Papa taught us that. Let them blame Papa. Papa don't, he doesn't care whether you blame me or not. I'm, I'm almost 70. I don't care about what you blame me. You blame, you blame, your are your jealousy, your hatred doesn't stop me. It doesn't bring food to my table. Mm -hmm. Look at what he said. Calling ten of his own bond servants, he gave them ten manners, each equal to about 100 days wages, or nearly $20, and said to them, buy and sell with this when I go and then return. One, I'm looking for one. It's a message Bible say, do business till I come. Do business, don't play. By, but first they called ten servants together, gave them each a sum of money and instructed them operate with this until I return. One, one scripture say, and let him go. He said, before he left, he called together ten of his servants and divided among them ten pounds of silver, saying, Infest this for me. Where I'm gone. Investment is wisdom. If your husband, because some, some, when they have money like this, the devil will send people to them. What in my problem? Oh, no, no, no. So at the point, at the cotto point, cotto point. So the seed is eating. Any food you eat is digested. If when you plant that, talk to the future. Are you hearing me at all? So opportunity plus what? Preparation equals what? Number four, problem you solve. Wait, hide in problem you solve. If you hate to solve problem for people, you people are trouble, but people are money. I wait. Opportunity. Wait, money is in problem you solve. The assumption of Christians today is that God will rain money down. He doesn't have any naira on dollar in heaven. If anything rain down, it's somebody who, who drop it, not God. He doesn't have machine in heaven to make money. Give you power for wealth, not wealth. Problem you solve. Joseph, Genesis 47. Joseph, don't carry your trouble. Don't become a project of prayer project of sin, of people comforting and consoling you for nothing. You are not the owner. We've been president, Nigeria president is sleeping. Why are you not sleeping? Why are you carrying the weight of it? Because we have read the paper, newspaper, every day, free read association. We read point, we read tribune, we read five papers. And you are going home, shaking your head and talking and discussing. Discussion will not bring you money. Go ahead and walk. I, I bet paper, you just glance through to see where you pray. But it doesn't hurt my spirit. It stops at my brain. So I can do a thing in my own life. Are you hearing me? Joseph, Genesis 47. Look at it. Have you been blessed today? And he has father officer that were with him in the world of his Lord house, saying, We have for look ye so sadly today. See what he's saying. You are kidnapped. Nobody knows you are dead. These people are in the Why are you concerned about helping them? He doesn't want to see sorrow around them. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream. They didn't know he was a dreamer. They didn't know how he got there. And there is no interpreter <laughs> of it. May what God placed in you, may he come to be recognized in Jesus' name. But you won't shut up your mouth, not help anybody. Because they won't know what to carry until you speak. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretation belong to God. Tell me them, I pray you. And become the beginning or what God plans for his future. So a close mouth is a close destiny. Problem you are willing to solve. I'm asking you today, what problem are you willing to solve? Many times we see Solomon was the richest in the world. Do you know Solomon saw in, in one country, horses, another country, they need horses. He even did buy and sell it. With all the riches he had, until silver become like stone in Israel. 
au sud du soleil. Some don't open their eyes. Say, do you see, you don't see anything? What they need? Why you travel for nothing? You go and come back with what they need here and they need here. Number five, vision. The word vision, provision, is a product of vision. Product, what come out of vision? When you are a man of vision, Proverbs 29:18. When you are a man of vision, what happened? Vision will be realized. Vision will produce result. Vision will bring money, bring reward. When you pursue God's what God's given dream, when you pursue God's given dream for your life and not live by assumption, your story will change for good. Where there is no vision, people perish. But he that kept the law happy, he give it to me in different passion and see verse and see what he's saying. Vision. What is driving this ministry is vision. It should drive your life also. Where there is no clear prophetic vision. You might be telling, oh, gosh, like that. I saw, I, I had a dream. I saw in the dream they are discussing about the, the cost of running governance or presidency is too high. And I want and this nation, they are considering many things. Who, who is considering? I don't know. Is he civilian? Is he military? I don't know. But we are about to be a restoration around something in the spirit realm is showing that changes are coming away. I was telling them, I said, I was hearing, and what came from me, I said that. I say in those days, a governor can only select 14 commissioners. Even if they are stealing money, they won't be as much as the widespread of depth in deafness that they have today. That's what I was saying that in that conversation. So I was a privacy, I was privy to the conversations that's happening in the realm of the of the spirit. Things are about to change. I don't know how it will happen. But to me, I feel something is happening. Something will change. And it will be a change for good. The things I don't know. But the stories will change for good. Some interjection, you need it. Because when the Holy Ghost reminded me of what I see, I better see it, Abby. So you know, Papa said, no. I say it, Abby. It's what I see that I say. So look at the vision. Look at Proverbs 29 18. Let's see it in the version. Let's see other things there. Show me there. Proverbs 29 18. He said, when there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. But when you follow the revelation of the word, everyone's bliss fill your soul. Let God's word bless your life. Let it, what God place in your heart. The vision, I say the vision is opposite of vision. Look at Gaius, for instance. Gaius become a leper because his vision was broken. Broken vision. His name, Gaius, means broken focus. And his focus was broken. I don't know why people leave their name. Second King 520. He ran after a man. The vision for the prophetic, he will have got the noble anointing possibly from Elisha. But see what he did. His vision was broken. He was after money. He wanted money, he wanted the anointing. It doesn't work that way. He has not served. He has not waited for his own time. What of Anna Severa? Acts 5, 1 and 2. Double minded. In case, they are, in case the revival end, so they will have something to fall back to. Yet yeah, they want to be honored as a big giver. So double minded. Anna Severa, Act 5, 1 and 2. So don't let your focus to be, be broken. Focus on one thing. Philippians 3. Paul was a good example. Philippians 3, 12 to 14. Look at it for me. Our time is well spent. I have many things to do. Let me, I'm going to rush now. No, look at Felicia, Philippians quickly. 3, 12 to 14. You have to be fast now to get, so I can finish what I'm doing. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into its abundance. May you run with passion into its abundance in Jesus' name, so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and want me to discover. 13. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. Be a man of focus. I forgot all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. 
verse 14 i run straight for the for what for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of jesus may you obtain what god has planned for you in jesus name unless you run my one forget the past that don't that does the past that don't benefit you forget them when see something is not benefiting you forget it it only exists in your memory the problem of the church today is that many christians they want they don't want your discipline they want your results discipline about this about this your discipline i come on time i wonder how people come around on their own time not see anything that they can learn from my punctualities and value for time and many other things that you can see from people people don't want your discipline they want your results how badly you desire something is seen your pursuit I'm, I'm not rushing how badly you desire something is seen in your pursuit so don't always look for immediate gratification there's what you call delay personal gratification things can delay it doesn't mean that it, it, it is not denied it told me eight nine he told them i will give you a land of milk and bread tell me eight nine i'm taking you to a land look at tell me eight nine for me a land where there's no scarceness of bread a land where in thou shall eat bread without scarceness thou shall not lack anything in it a land whose stones are high on and out of whose e thou will dig a brass there is no stone that high on raw material is there you take it to the furnace to get your high on there is no land that has bread a land of milk and bread the cow does not give milk until you make it so i'm saying when god is saying that to you he assumed that you would have understanding that you must be a walk a walk not yahoo a walk the cow does not give milk until you make it the wheat does not bring bread until you process it don't be accustomed to getting things easy. Easy way. Too bad easy. Allah was in bed. No! Christianity is today. Assumption. Christian has assumption. They don't want to wala. What they are looking for is called the generation of sin. How many are looted in Africa? African leaders looted their fund. Share it until they are indebted. That's not to live. That's not true worth. So don't be accustomed to getting things so easy. Priceless blessing should not be taken for granted. That's what I'm saying. Priceless blessing should not be taken for granted. Second King 5, 15 and 16. Elijah told Naaman, go away. I will not take anything from you. Naaman gave us took it for granted. Ah! Why was God not taking anything from him? It's a priceless blessing. So Naaman will be obligated to give to God, to worship God, and see the response of a reasonable person who is helped. He said, I will take your soil. I will not bow down to anything again. The only God, because if he has prayed for it, he will not do that one. God wants to be obligated to him. That's why he gives you free, free things, not pay for. Happiness is the result of effort. That's my summary. Sacrifice and understanding. Your happiness. Your, happy, your joy, your happiness is a result of effort. Your source is a result of effort, sacrifice, and understanding. Diligence and perseverance is the secret of success. Diligence and perseverance is the secret of success. T.G. Dix, he was talking the story, he had 10 members in 10 years. Of pastor and after 10 years god asked him to move to dallas he got there he had 25,000 members one of the biggest church but what for the first 10 years of his life is as if anything failed he preached the good sermons and anointed the at was there for 10 in 10 years my higgy mentor said god has me to start a healing healing program healing program healing he said for the first six months of of doing healing school Six months. Say, he didn't remember anybody that was healed. He preached healing. He prayed for them. When many years ago, he said, many for six months, 
he said when he grew up, he understand what is happening. It was the devil fighting him, and God allowed it to happen so that he would know whether he will go back and say it's not working or not. See, after six months, people are released from the grave. Criminals are working. Nobody knew it until it became explosive that they know all over the world. But the first six months of doing that program, nobody was well. Nobody, nobody, no testimony. He preached. He prayed for them. Nobody had testimony. Who is he? Nobody come out for six months. God was, the devil was doing that one to him that things. And God allowed it to see whether he will stand by it. If, if he, because, he, because he believed that God's word is working. But one day, explosive, crippled, rising up and walking. And he became so much celebrated and known all over the world. The test of greatness is small areas. Are you getting me today? Say, I hear. May you not give up in life. So hard time creates strong man, and strong men create good time. Hard times create strong Christians. Hard time create strong. I've told you before, this is the time to be strong. Hard time creates strong man, and strong men create good time. Good times are coming your way. So be a person of one thing. You are not born to do everything. You do this, let your life be simple. That's my summary. From Philippians 3, 12 to 14, you are a person of one thing. You are not born to do everything. Let your life be simple. People with vision live longer. They have no stress. They are not distressed. The stress comes from not knowing what to do with your life. On Sunday, one of the Sunday I gave you, I preached the other Sunday, Jesus told Martha, who live on assumption, Christian assumption, Luke 10, 38 to 42, he lived on assumption. She had a visitation, Jesus came to their home, she assumed Jesus was hungry and was cooking, cooking, cooking. After some time, she blackmailed Mary, Jesus and Mary, and Mary. Master, Rabbi, tell my sister to join me, see here. Say, Martha, Martha. You don't tell God what he must do. He was telling God what he must do. Tell my brother, my sister, to come and help me. Martha ended up cooking and hungry. What he orders to join her. But study the answer of Jesus. Verse 41, 42. Look at Luke 10, 41, 42. Study the answer of Jesus. Let's look at it in the Hebrew version. I went to the version to look at it. You are so busy about many things. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. You are careful and troubled about many things. Original was saying you are so busy, so busy about many things. Don't, don't try this and try this and get hold. What is in your heart? What is best you can do? You are trying to be everything to everybody. Only a few things are necessary. That's what Jesus was saying to her. Only a few things are necessary. Life is, life is full of many things. Question I'm asking you, January, February, March, April has gone. Are these things, are those things you have done, this format necessary? Think about it. What is necessary? Yeah, if I don't go, I will not please anybody. They will be angry. If I don't give, angry. If I don't do this one, how long will you live your life? Running the life of you, trying to, to be everything to everybody. To go everywhere. Kwaya, Kolewa, church, Kolewa on time, Usaka. Because you don't want to offend people. Hmm? First Corinthians 6 12. Paul said, Everything is permissible for me. I will not be mastered by anything. May nothing master you. Look at First Corinthians 6 12. All things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. What does it mean? NIV. He said, I have the right. But not everything is beneficial for me. I have the right. You have the right to jump everywhere. But not everything is beneficial for you. You have the same time. African time is called out of foolishness and carelessness of handling time. NLT. Look at NLT for me. NLT. See what he said. NLT. Give it to me. NLT. Time is going quickly. You say, I'm allowed to do anything. 
but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. So don't become a slave to anything. Tell your neighbor, don't become a slave. Tell him very well. To anything. And new KJV say all things are lawful, but not helpful. Aramic Bible, you don't have that word. Aramic Bible, he said everything is legal, legally free, but not everything is useful. Do what is useful. Another one, say everything. One month in the day, everything is liable, but not profitable. Everything is liable, liable, but not everything is profitable for me. Here is what I wrote there in the summary of what I wrote there. Can you give to me in the, is it TPT there? Can I mean, give it to me in the message Bible? Message Bible. Let's see message of that scripture. Let's see what it says. What I say differently. First Corinthians 6, 12. Read me, everybody. Just because something is technically legal doesn't mean that it's spiritually appropriate. Let's stop it. I have my right. My right. Sometimes it is good to be kind and to be right. Not every time. Oh, we must feed that follow on that for all the time that God said just just just. just like. In fact, sometimes God didn't fight for us because we are fighting ourselves. You want it? <laughs> Take everything away. <laughs> See, I'm being, just don't worry. God will vindicate you. Sometimes. When people say, can you see what that person in Luke 12 who came to Jesus Christ? Oh my year new. Before Jesus was preaching mystery, he said he just interjected the message. Say, please, Master, my brother is cheating me. The property, they give me my own. Just say, who make me the better over you? And say a man's life does not contain the abundance of what he has. Oh, yeah, boy. Publicly. Why to pay to a lot? What is in your mind? He said. He said, before the preaching was preaching, he just, he said, Luke 12. That time is wrong, so we can go back home and check it here. Okay, he just, kilo a lock and he didn't like, oh, no, I'm going to tell you, hello, hello, master, who make me a good value over you? A must life is not in the abundance of what he has. How can money choke your life that you cannot even raise anything? You want to pray, money, nani, two plus four, oh, yeah, nani. <laughs> Carry money to everyone head. No. Just because something is technically legal doesn't mean that it's spiritually. There are time to fight your right to. When you are despised and God said fight. But the time that God said just leave it and go. Many years ago, somebody swindled and took something that uh, money asked them to go and do something. He just, they carry him to carry him out of a relation. He was a lawyer, carry him, and the day they will put him in prison like this, I told them, say, leave him. He's, he's too small to be going to prison. A year ago, Dana, so can you find They say, they want 10 years. See what they have said today. They, they call it correctional center. He says, since they call it that center now, that's what Pabio said, Senator, State President. He says, since they call it correctional center, more people are breaking day now. Call it what it is. Call adultery, adultery, not a fear. <laughs> call it a fear. Say, it's having a fear. Which a fear is having? It's having adultery. Money laundry. Ole, ojale. The gram of body laundry is too big. <laughs> Leave it for a lawyer like uh, Barista Kowe. Thief is thief. Abi. Amen and amen. We call it a fear. And you live in sin. So it can look at it, like, it can look as if it's a uh, 
So as you, you are going older, as you grow older, you can't afford to make mistake. No time for experimentation. Don't try, you don't try. No time more. The time is getting late. It is too late. Know your destination. You are not getting younger. Some people in your life are unnecessary. Playing with them and eating with them are distraction. Playing with them and eating with them are distractions. Don't be unnecessary. Don't buy unnecessary things. 40 cups. Feel like opening. Give it away so that your house will be neat, not, not dirty. And stop buying what you don't need. Don't buy unnecessary things. Vision simplify life. Study people are successful. Their lives are simple. Their lives are simple. Stress comes from not knowing what to do with your life. Don't live on assumption. Tell your neighbor, don't live on assumption. Tell him very well. Second Samuel chapter 11. Let's speak of it on the man after God's heart called David. He was caught in the trap of sin. Sin can be complex and clumsy. Jesus paid the penalty of our sin. But the practice of sin, if you understand God and who you are and what the devil do, God is not against you. But the devil trap people today in iniquity. David was better. Why he is a servant than when he was a king? For when he was a servant, he feared to kiss all his enemy. 21 times. They attempted his life three times or two times. He saw a chance to kill Saul. He didn't kill him. As a servant, he was a better believer. But when he became a king, what happened? He slew Uriah. His most faithful associate. He was dutiful. The latter was, was a stranger. Uriah married Bathsheba. Bathsheba's father was in the battle was a friend of, of, uh, of David. The grandfather of Bathsheba was Aitofe, a wise man, one of the leaders in your team. Make it mess, a messy mess. Messy. What is happening to you? What come of you? You are, you are going ahead and, and, and attempting to cover up a deception. Um, danger came, was trapped. What happened? What caused it? Temptation. Turn into lust, lost into adultery. When the consequences of his adultery threatened to expose his sin, he covered it first with deception and then with murder. He called the man to come up, one man pregnancy. If he's eight months old and the man who is drunk, he will not know the time he slept last, he know he come back home. So eight months pregnancy can be delivered. Eight months and nine months, anybody can give birth. So it's arranging. So when the man, the man died, he took the wife. People are pressing him. He's a holy man. Oh, ah! He's, see how he's talking the wife of his associates to help the woman. We will know him to help the woman. So he looked holy to man, but not to God. Deception. David stay home. What, what started it? He stay home from the war against the Harmonite. Wars are normally fought during cold winter. That is the time for you to go and relax. Everybody fight war during cold winter, ice. But you fight during, fighting resume during spring. And David just stayed too down, model up God's plan, and stay too long at home until if David's attention had been where God wanted it, he would never have put it where God did not want. So let your attention be where God wants. One day you walk on the roof. He paced back and forth. He could not sleep. Why he was not sleeping? Unusually, because he was not where God wanted him to be. Because where he was, was not where God planned for him. When you are not where God planned for you, it is disturb. Peace is not there. He saw a woman bathing, and the rest is history. Illicit pursuit of pleasure, directly or indirectly, cost him a lot. The story is in 2 Samuel 11. You can't read it today, but you know the story very well. He saw a woman bathing. 
and the rest is history. A man after God's heart. Look at Act 13 22. A man after God's heart went against his own heart. A man after God's heart went against his own heart, falling through a lustful impulse. And after the reading of the law and the prophet, Act 13 22, not 15, Act 13 22. What's my topic again? What's my topic? And when he had removed him, he raised up unto, unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Yet, at one time of his life, a man after God's heart went against his own heart, falling through a lustful impulse. What are the consequences of it? When you look at the trouble that came when you miss the mark and you live where God placed you, doing your own will and making your, becoming your own Lord, making your wrong choice, the consequences, number one, unwanted pregnancy. Number two, the murder of a trusted associate. Number three, a dead baby. The murder of a trusted associate, looking, wishing in their heart that the object of their victim should die. Number one, unwanted pregnancy. Number two, the murder of a trusted associate. Number three, a dead baby. He pray, he cry. For seven days, the child died. God, you honor a prayer. Number four, a daughter raped by his son. Hammer raised Tamar. What was she doing? If what happened in this place, the spirit, the devil was operating. A daughter raped his, by his own, his own son. Number five, one son, Absalom. Mother, not son, have none. Mother in his family. And the man ran away. He came back one day, number six, a civil war led by one of his sons, and thousands are dead. Let's battle. Let me start again. On water pregnancy. Number two, the mother of a trusted associate. Number three, a dead baby. Number four, a daughter raped by a son. Number five, one son, Absalom, mother, another son, have none. Number six, a civil war led by one of his sons, Absalom. And thousands are dead. In needless war. Number seven, a son who imitated David, lack of self control, was Solomon. He had 1,000 inside as husband and as concubine and wife. Why? Number eight, the spies from Joab, his sister's son, because he knew the secret. He was the one that arranged for that death of Raya. So he didn't respect him again. Asiri, Asiri, some leaders cannot talk because they have the secret of their life. You lose honor when you are part of the, of, of the failure. That's what secrets see. Living, live for the Lord. Uh, he, uh, what happened? He assumed that he can cover it. He assumed that he can manage it. Ah, ah. Uriah was a associate that was serious. A stranger. It's not a, 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 but he married a child, a daughter of a nobleman. His father, Helam, was in the battle. His grandfather of Bathsheba was Ayutofe, the closest man to you. No wonder he was praying. You know what Ayutofe did? Ayutofe want to revenge. He knew what happened. I believe that they sent to Uriah and told him the Uriah, Bathsheba had come to the palace. If, if they give you drink, don't go home. Because it's unusual for your old president to ask you to go to your wife and refuse to go. Because Ayutofe was in the palace was a wise man. So when the day of vengeance come, when God has had mercy upon him, a man, sovereign in his hand, don't join them to fight him. Ayatove now said to Absalom, arrange, your father has carried some wife away. Concubines are ready. Hope half, a, half a tent, openly, let sleep with your father's children, wife. So he'll be open to everybody. In revenge. To say for months here, was safe. And David has to pray, Oh God, defeat Ahitophel, cancel. Because you are sinning with people around you. How can people be around you who trusted and serving you and you are sinning against their wife? Sinning against them. I want to long call a lower, who then who then says you want. Who say who says you want? Can you see people? Ministry to ministry they are polluted. See the testimony in social media of pollutions. Pollutions that is fitty. 
with things social media is telling lie every line fitness don't let it be in the house of the lord because assumption because there's no grace grace in it grace in it does, does grace make you live a stupid life the life that only others live if you see the category of the consequence of what happened in the future and see the the the, the incredible sickness that will happen be in the body of christ you'll be surprised God, nobody, no question. But let your children know this God of your, of your fathers. The God of this, that follow God. And sit down and not join any church, anyhow. Look at it and read what is happening to them. What are they doing? How's the degree? How can a pastor be sleeping with his own daughter and make him pregnant? Is that right? If you don't judge it, the world will judge us. And they are judging already. Haitofe, a trusted the wise man, died with his bitterness in revenge. The grandfathers of Passeba. What? Look at it. No wonder. Uh, David, David penciled Psalm 32 in response. Psalm 32 was penciled by David in response to what happened that day. Oluwa, oh, it's, it's, it look at it. Look at Psalm 32. Been too long to say a Psalm of David. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputed not iniquity. God said you will not die. But you have allowed the ungodly to reproach. They will say, how do I have not so well with all this family? They will talk against me. He said, and whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, see the danger of cover sins. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my running all the day long. He was anointed. He, 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 he didn't know he, he was not in the right place. When he failed, you could have called Uriah and say, I failed. I should die in your hand. And the sincerity man say, I forgive you. King, it's okay, the king. God said, You will not die. But the shame of it, ah! Arrangement. That's one fail. Give me a, a bomb to die on the world. And the child was born. So it take nine months or ten months. In ten months of what he did, he was rolling on the bed. So he has to be using <laughs> drug, possibly. See what he said. He said, my bones. Blood. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into drought. Summer, until God said, I will deliver him from it. Now that he's not sleeping and he's not well with him, you sing God, the choir master, the leader, the psalmist, let's deliver him. Now went to his house and told him the story. I said, Now let you face this issue. See what happened to him. He said, Because. Why? What was what was happening? Look at see, see the the, the pleasure, what the pleasure he had. Can you compare with this penalty and the trouble he had? When men are thoughtful, when you are thoughtful about your life, not assuming, assuming, assuming things, assuming grace. God sees sex as a cement that help bind together relationships in marriage. But the world see it primarily as pleasurable experiences. But don't you know it become a way for the enemy to attack and say they have a reason to defeat and destroy him. Call his name and let him die in sleep. Job 29, 1 to 7. What's the cure? When my steps are cease. Job 29, verse 6. When my steps are battered with cream and the rock pour out rivers of oil for me. This is the key to living. The word of God releases the power and nothing of the Holy Spirit. That's why you meditate in God's word. If your steps are directed by the Holy Spirit, God will back up the grace upon your life. That's what he's saying. That's what God is saying. God will back up the encounter upon your life. He will change your story. Don't be independent of God. Complete dependence upon God is the attitude you must have. Don't be like Lucifer who declares independence from God. Isaiah 14, 13. I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the star of God. I will sit upon the mountain in the side of the north. He told Adam and Eve to live life without God until they find themselves naked. 
Don't find yourself naked. Don't let the enemy deceive you. That you can live outside of his permission. Let God be God in your life. Because second Timothy 3 12, all that will live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will live for the Lord. Don't look for a reason to quit on God. It depends on God. No alternative to his will. We can't be mad at the only one that make us. John 15, 5, I am divine. You are the branches. You are the branches. You are the branches. He is divine. Branches survive because they depend on the vine. For without me, you can do nothing. Look at it. John 55, I am divine. You are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bring for more fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. May you do something. Biggest reason for doing nothing. Is not being connected to the vine. You rather die obeying God than quitting on what God asks you to do. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Let us not be weary. Let him that is taught in the world communicate to him that teach all good things. Let us be weary in well doing as we have opportunities. Your story will change. Your story will change. Grace will be multiplied on your behalf. God will be glorified in every area of your life. Your days of smallness are over. Amen. God will be your source. Amen. You will see God in every area of your life. Amen. You, will live, you will not live on presumption. Amen. You will allow God to make you. Amen. You will have confidence in what he's doing. God, the blessing of God make it rich. You will prosper. That's what happened to Abraham. You will prosper more than Lot. It is natural, it is impossible for a man who graces flock and has in the desert to prosper like God gave Abraham. But God can make you prosper in any area. Whether looking difficult or not, God can make you prosper. I see God changing your story. God will reward you. Be a good steward. Serve his interest. And God will glorify your life. Are you hearing to him? Are you hearing me? Money is difficult to come by. When you think of yourself as the provider, money reminds you of how hard you have to work just to get by and give it away will seem to be to be further away from the goal of having all you need met. But all of that will be true if God was not your source. So in God's economy, move closer towards your goal by giving than you do by clinging in everything you have. Let God be there for you. You will prosper. It is possible to prosper without God. But it come with headache. The worst attitude towards finances is causing people to be totally stressed out. They need a pill to get through the day, another pill to get sleep at night. We need to quit following the example of the world. The godly way to see prosperity is to remember that God has given us the power to get wealth. Rise up, let's pray. Are you blessed today? What's my topic again? Christians and their assumption. And we have seen many assumptions today, but God will be glorifying your life. You make the right choice. I want to pray one prayer. In the next two minutes I have. I want to pray one prayer. I want to pray one Help me, O Lord. That I will not detour. I will walk the walk you have planned for me. I will not be presumptuous. I won't assume. I won't use it as I'm going. I will not be experimenting with life. My life will not be on experimentation. Try this, try that. I believe you. I want to talk to God today. What you have heard. Are you, is, is life troublesome? Are you struggling? Are you confused? Are you disappointed? Are you hungry? Whatever it is, God has answer. He will get you out of them, out of all trouble. Disappointment, frustration is not part of your destiny. Your story will change for good. Are you having pains? Are you looking helpless? Talk to God right now. God is by your side. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Let character be formed in your life. What God is doing in your life. You have a pulpit. You have a platform. You pull people from the pit. Is there anybody around you that is in trouble today that your consolation and comfort will help their life? Will help them to become... It's more than money, your comfort. Wait, come by idea. 
tell God to the Lord I'm open to you in the place of prayers you will sit down and think and write it down God will give back tell God Lord give me ideas that will salvage and take me to a higher level talent my talent and gifts will not be wasted I will value what I carry Lord help me to open my eyes to baptize my eyes to see opportunities that you will not go beside me I won't take a wrong choice pray your choices will be informed not like Gaius, not like Hannah and Safira. Problem you solve for people. You won't be tired of helping people. I will solve problem. What problem has God created you to solve? Some of you are good at this and this and this. Don't waste your resources. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't speak. Don't, don't waste it. You are gifted. You are gifted. Don't hide it. Focus. Some are focusing on many things. Focus on many things. Don't live on your past. Talk to God right now. Talk to God right now. Some of you are faithful. Many of you are faithful. But gratification. What God tell you, you are getting this courage. Is it coming? The harvest is coming. A farmer respect harvest. It will come. It will come. It will turn money into dancing. It give you a laughter. And some are here waiting for the milk. Making for milk and bread. I said, the cow does not give milk until you make it. What must you do? What must you do as your part? To get the bread out of the wheat. To get the milk out of the cow. Effort. Sacrifice. The same time you have. Oh, you boys, don't create African time. In church. In your home. In your family. Don't procrastinate. Don't leave things. Hard time. Create strong men. Don't join them. He say Nigeria is hard. Be strong at this hour. Strong women. Strong men are created by hard time. And strong men create good time. Let the time be good for your family. You are not born for everything. Don't be for Christmas. And the money is not, he doesn't know where the money is going. He doesn't know how he spend the money. Ah, you spending your money. Have a diary. Write it down. Don't go ahead and present us. Don't become father of everybody, mother of everybody. Don't be like Martha. A Christian God. Don't assume he came to visit their house. And he, was, he thought he was hungry. Why not ask him, where do you come, sir? We are glad to have you. Where are you here, sir? Where are you still talking? Should I be part of it? Everyone that has is stressful. I want to pray today. No more stress around your life. The reason for stress is what we are adding to our life. Tell me around what I'm can hard is he. Tell me around what that God didn't ask you to do, you are adding to it. You are adding to it until you become old. One day God spoke to me. He said, the way you are going. He said, give me a scripture. I satisfy your mind with good things that your day shall be really like a nigga. If I give you good things and you are throwing them away to people who don't deserve, who are lazy. Say you, you just grow old. Cook quickly. I say, I hear. I'm still learning. I'm still hearing. Because some of us, our culture, our background affect us. And God is telling you, you cannot play everybody. Don't be everything to everybody. Only few things are necessary. I want to talk to you to pray today. To pray, to start to plan. To plan. Everything is permissible for me. I will not be mastered by anything. I will not be mastered by anything. Permissible. Everything is legal. Free. But not everything is useful. Everything is unliable but not profitable. As you are growing older, no time for experimentation. Don't let it be too late. Don't buy unnecessary things. Let your life be simple. Don't live on assumption. Some today, the first car they buy with little money because the, the, the statue symbol. It's not a Jeep, it's not good. Jeep. Jeep. Today, what is matter today is. A cut is is foil, foil saving. 
first seven comparing yourself with yourself you are not wise but let me run more what say most say the mother died 20 years ago we have no business what's in your money but attack that to cool join yeah we are small missing by at what that bar and so what those who want to hit your money we encourage you to do that one oh oh you are here pastor reverend um, my one and his wife I told them they want to see me. I said, I have a meeting tonight. Talk to God today, beloved, every one of you. Your life must not be living in the crucible, in, this, in, in, in the goggle of others. Don't use others' binocular to live your life. Your binocular, binoculars of others, not live your life. I want to talk to God. Let's spend some time to talk to the Lord. To talk to the Lord, assumption. 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 It is the pursuit of pleasure as Christians. Assumption. Assumption. We'll be shocked today about this iniquities and sinfulness in, in some body of Christ. Assumption. Marriages are not for honored. Assumptions. Which which company are you? Who is your friend? We be grace in Grace Woody. Tumba Yese. Are you see? Which grace is that? Assumption. It's not in church. It's not obeying God. Can you see what happened today? It's just do his will. Assumption. Love our pleasures. David will have been in the battle. He was trapped. Because he was in the right place. There are some today who have been there. Yeah. They have their own choices. Custom experience shows that when there's a spring, you go to the battle. But you remain in comfort zone. Galatians 5 16 walk in the spirit and you know with the lust of the flesh to walk in the spirit to walk in the word of God let your step be held by the word of God give attention to God's word let direct your steps let direct your step everybody's blaming the devil devil cause it devil cause it no foolishness not walking by the step of it. talk to God today I want to pray commit your life to God today you will not assume people matter your step ordered by the Lord. Your step ordered by God. May God order your steps. I told you what God said to me. Disappointment, setback cannot stop God bringing his word to pass in your life. You have to pull people, pull them up, pull them out of the pit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to make some commitment to, to God today. After come to this morning, I've come to talk to you. Because as we are nearing the end time, just said there will be lawlessness in the last day. When I start ministry, whether you're a professor or a doctor, you come late to my meeting, you'll be walking around the church. You will run around the church. You'll be three or four times. What is wrong with the cons cons commitment today? Does comfort become a trouble for the righteous? The commitment, the self, the, what we see social media today, some can be exaggerated. But when genuine people are talking about how they are molested by so called people who should know God, number one, they have problems also because they are ignorant. They thought they are doing God's service. Servicing their life and living a stupid life. 
We are the honors of the body of Christ. We are the honor of the church again. It's grace, it lances to lawlessness. The one that preached about grace was Paul. But yet, when he came before a governor, and he talked about righteousness, self-control, and judgment, he said, go away, I will hear you again. It means the service and the sermons has not been completed in grace if there is no self-control judgment. Where do you have this? Where do you have? Where do you get this, the doctrine that every time you preach, it must be a limit. Money is coming. If money is the issue, then Gote has no reason to be born again. If it's everything about this life, we are most miserable. But a commitment to the Lord. Assumptions are many. What will keep a man after God's heart? To allow his heart to be hot. He was not in the right place. Comfort. The more comfortable we are in God, the more we must be careful to be sure that we don't allow things that are wrong. Somebody said Bathsheba also was deliberate to take back at the time that the king could see her. But whichever way, I'm not going to excuse David because of Bathsheba. People blame people today. They say they cause it for them to fall. But even when he had failed, why not settle down on Hunum? That's the dangers of making leaders, leaders who have not been mature and proof in life. You can't hold up to it and recover and cover and cover until they die and go to hell. But God in his love confronted David. See the danger he had. He said he couldn't sleep. His bones were aching. He's getting old. By the time he was down at 70 years old, just a few months, I will be 70. And then the Bible said he was satisfied. He died in a good old age. How can 70 be a good old age? Because the art man, the trouble of his life, when you see your son pursuing you barefooted, and she may throw you a stone, oh, Lucy, oh, lay bloody, to rule suffer me. You can fight your enemy, but you can't fight your son. The day that Absalom died, instead for him to be rejoicing, he was crying. You know what he was crying? He was crying, if not for what I did with Bathsheba and Raya. I won't have allowed what is still not happen in the family. So when Joab came and said, we came back and you are crying. So if Absalom had died and live and all of us are dead, you will be happy. If you don't go come back now and greet everybody and welcome them, and everybody will leave you today and you'll be empty. You'll see how worse it can be for you. Keep commander man of the whole president. Commando fire, Ekun Davidi. Ekwe is not because of Absalom. If not for what I did, it would have happened. Absalom, Absalom, Absalom. He was saying he wish he died instead of Absalom. David was such a selfless man when he counted and 70,000 are dead. And angel, he saw angel, he asked God, I am the one that counted, kill me. But they are not your God for a boy's life. God say the people didn't pray for you. That's why you made a mistake. It's not you that will die. I will allow the enemy to do the worst, but not on your family. Nobody, the family of David died because he was anointed. That's why you pray for people who carry anointing so that they will not go ahead because when they fail, it can affect. Judgment come with the people first before you get to the man. But David was a selfless man. He didn't care to die. I only would walk up and say, Go back, kill me now. Absalom, I wish you were the one that died before Absalom. It is a selfless man, but see how he got himself. He was in the right place at the right time. I want to pray for you. Close your eyes for prayer. You are not where you ought to be. Your commitment many years ago is not like this. You also know, maybe prayer life, it may be world life, maybe your love for God 
whatever it is. I can't talk to people who are not here. I'm talking to you because I want you to raise your level of consecration to God again. My topic is Christian assumption. He assumed everything is okay. Why can't you judge yourself? Instead, we are, we are exposing others. You can cover other people's sin, not your own sin, your own failure. Talk to God today and say, Lord, help me. I want to live. I want to raise the level. I want to open my love for you. The level I will not assume on you. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me, oh, Lord. I will not waste what you give to me. I will not waste. Today, we are seeing people today who said, Titan is okay. Now they are saying, greed, covetousness has entered. Some who are faithful many years ago are not faithful again. How can the last force become the last? How can the last? How can they take your position, please? Talk to God. Oh, Father, we thank you today. It's a personal thing. I'm not asking anybody to come out. I'm asking to be individual thing with God. Christians and assumption. Christians and the assumption. Talk to God to the Lua. Enough of assumption. Enough of thinking that things without praying. Some today, a double here, he succeed for a while. A double this one and double on thing and double and double and double. They get all doubling. You better be focused. They try this, they try that one. How long will you try? Pray and know the mind of God. Know the mind of God for the moment. Don't just carry things and do things for doing sake. You try this, you fail, you try this, time is going, it's running out. Fear, emotion. I don't want to lose friends. Lose them and have God around you to make it. Father, I pray that this war will not be against any of us. In a world of apostasy, you have your people. You are resting a generation in this last day. Righteous people, people of your people, who know you and work with you. There's a coming judgment, a coming demarcation, a coming separation between this lazy and serious and the wayward and the lawless who are representing the Jehovah God. Exposures, exposures, exposures are coming. They will come in small, they come in big. When I say exposures, I'm talking not of men who repent, a women who repent. I'm talking about people who continue to live a life of deception. People who continue to live in deception continuously without judging themselves. For the Bible says, if you don't judge yourself, you shall be judged. I'm asking, I'm talking to you today that you will must live for the Lord. You cannot be frustrated by the event of the days. I know it is hard, but hard as it is, is the easiest way for God to catapult you to the next level. No famine, no pestilence, no war can swallow up what God planned for you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that your faith will not fail. You will not quit on God. Your family will not be in disarray. You will not join men and women whose family are scattered because they are not following your will or because they are not matching out with your will. May your leading of the Holy Ghost be direct. May you order our steps. May your anointing of God walk in our steps as you follow your will for our life. Help your people, O oh Lord, to strengthen them in their inner man, to be committed, to follow your will. To increase their pace with you, following you all the way. And may you show this generation that you are the one that rewarded your home. Bless their work. Bless them with godly idea. Bless them. Let them solve problems of men and become rich. Prove to them that you can bless them in the midst of it all. That changes are coming. You didn't love the ungodly more than them. That God opened doors. Let God be open. Let God be open far and near and bless them. Before a need arise, provision be waiting for you. So he be. May God be glorifying your life. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we pray.